Juve were a complete powerhouse in Italian football during the 2010s. They won 19 trophies in this time, nine of which were Serie A titles. But during this decade of dominance, they couldn't win the UCL. In fact, they haven't been able to win it since 1996. And that got me curious, guys. What could I achieve with Juve if I spent a decade in charge of them? Well, in today's video, we're going to find out. As for the next 10 seasons, I'm going to become Juventus' new manager. The mission is always is to win as many trophies as possible, become a powerhouse once again in Italian football and make them Europe's most dominant club. And of course, the wheel is making its return to either make my life way easier or a living hell. So here is the Juve team that we've loaded into in our first season in charge. And granted, it's nowhere near on the same level as it used to be, but it's still a damn good side. I mean, you've got Dusan Vlavic, you've got Federico Chiesi, you've got Bremer, and of course, you've got Chesney in goal. And it's actually a pretty a young team too as you can see from our highest rated players only three of them are up of 30 years old but that's not saying we haven't got all players in the team because we've got about six or seven of them right now so at some point we're definitely gonna have to address this situation but to top it off guys we've got 159 million euros in season one with Juve everything right now with this team is looking good and as you can see from the leaderboard Arsenal are still the top dog so far 26 trophies in total not 24 I do apologize I just can't count but the question question is guys can the Italian giant Juve take on Arsenal and not them off that top spot ladies and gents there's only one way to find out so let's kick it now the first thing I've done is switch to the 3-5-2 formation this makes total sense to me because everybody apart from one player in that starting 11 is actually in their natural position now and I'm partnering this up with the gig and pressing tactical vision it's a very young team so they've got the legs for it and honestly I reckon this partnered up with the 3-5-2 is going to cause nightmares for everybody we play against and after messing round with the team a bit this is the strongest starting 11 i feel like we've got right now going into season one before we make any signings that is i mean remember guys we've got 150 plus million euros to spend on improving this team but as we all know we can't do anything with this money until we spun that wheel and we all know how easily that wheel can turn our season upside down so without further ado let's get into it the first spin of the wheel what is wheels choice okay spin the wheel of leagues and only sign play from the league it lands on. Okay, that's different. The wheel's stepping its game up, ladies and gents, making a completely new wheel for me. And we've landed on the Premier League. That is absolutely fantastic. Oh my God, what a start to the takeover. Now, guys, I've been looking at the team and I feel like there's only two positions that we really do need to focus on in season one. We need a better centre-back than Danilo and we need an out-and-out -out attacking midfielder in place of Moretti. I mean, Moretti is a damn good player, but he's not an out-and-out -out attacking midfielder, is he? And this may surprise you guys, but I'm going to bring in Kai Havertz for that attacking midfield role. I don't know why, but I feel like he'd absolutely kill it in the Serie A. And following him is Kanate from Liverpool. He's 24, 82 rated. He's already a beast in the Premier League. Imagine how good he'll be in the Serie A. And just as fast as our transfer window began, we ended it just as quickly as 119 and a half million euros later, we signed both of these players on a five-year contract. Gotta be honest though, I'm curious to see how we get on with the additions of Kanate and Havid, are they going to help elevate Juve to the next level or are they going to stay in the same spot they're already in? Well, unfortunately, there's no Serie A title to celebrate. We're third in the Serie A, a solid 24 points behind Inter Milan. We have got a lot of catching up to do if we want to be the best team in Italy again. We did, however, make the semis of the Coppa Italia, just losing out to Roma on away goals. And I've just checked every European competition there is on FC 24, and it turns out Juve didn't even qualify for Europe last year. The good news, however, ladies and gents, the team is looking way better now than it did at the start of this season. And just look at some of the development. And it's the same story for our loaned out players. I loaned a couple out myself, including one Fabio Moretti, who's only 20 years old. He's 78 rated now. Guys, he's definitely going to become a very important player to us in the near future. But by a mile, our two most important players so far, Dusan Vlajevic, and believe it or not, Kai Havertz gained 12 and 16 for him, and Vlajevic gained 23 and 5. Now, granted, we didn't win any trophies in Season 1, but as you've already seen, this team has grown the it's developed, it's improved, and I feel like season one, whilst it hasn't won us any trophies, it's definitely set us up for success for the rest of this takeover. But we can't forget the wheel, it always has a say in what happens, and it looks like we've just landed on a good one, big boost. Training has paid off, your starting 11 players all get a plus two and overall, that is absolutely fantastic. I don't know what the wheel's up to, giving us nice things 
all of a sudden, but there you go. Every single one of our starting 11 players has been increased by two. I'm definitely going to take this whilst it's coming our way. And to top it off, we've got just over 270 million euros to improve this team. Everything with Juve is looking up. That does beg the question though, apart from our centre-back Gatti, who definitely does need improving upon, where do we put this money? Because that is a lot of money not to spend and we'll definitely regret not spending it later on in this takeover. Maybe we buy for the future. I don't feel like we need to mess with the midfield because we've got Ravella and Moretti out on loan still. And we don't really need a striker because we've got Caio Jorge on loan to buy Munich as we speak. So that leaves our goalkeeper and our defence that just needs bolstering a bit, so a couple of centre-backs and a better second choice keeper for the future after Chesney eventually retires. Now starting back to front, I've gone for Guglielmi Restes for our future goalkeeper. He's only 19, 77 rated. He's already an exciting prospect and I spent 25 million to make him a Juve player. As for Gatti's replacement, I'm going for Marquinhos from PSG. Granted he's 30 years old, but he's experienced. He's a top, top player and he will definitely help elevate us to the next level. As for our centre-back for the future, Castello Lukbert is the player I'm going for. Only 21 years old, 80 overall. Got some fairly good stats now. I can't wait to see what he's like in five seasons' time. And just like that, another transfer window is done and dusted us for 146 million. We've signed both of these players on permanent deals. But I did also send Restes and also Castello Lukbert out on loan for a couple of years each. I mean, whilst they are the future of UV, they aren't the present, are they? Because ladies and gents, this is the present of UV, and let's be honest guys, while season 1 was a flop when it comes to silverware, I definitely don't think season 2 is going to be the same situation. And I was bang on the money ladies and gents, we've won the Serie A title with UV, that's our first trophy won of this takeover. Make that trophy number 2 because we've beaten AC Milan in the EA Sports FC Super Cup. But Fiorentina knock us out in the Coppa Italia quarters. That is a little disappointed. I'd like to make it to at least the semis. But we've got a lot of work to do in Europe still. Real Madrid annihilate us in the quarters 6-2 on aggregate. Jesus, I thought we had a solid team as well. But apparently not solid enough because let's be honest guys, if this team's getting its backside handed to it by Real Madrid, their team must be on a different planet to us. And to be fair guys, the stats are improving. Vlaovic, Moise Keen, Chiesa and Kai have it's all gained at least 20 goal contributions a season so far. Who do you guys think is going to be the top goal scorer and assisted by the end of this takeover, by the way? I feel like if we can keep him, Vlavic will be our top goal scorer and Havertz is going to be our top assister, believe it or not. So far, though, guys, it is looking pretty decent with Juve. We've got eight more seasons to go with them, so let's hope that wheel continues to be a little bit kind to us. But before we get to season three, if you're enjoying this video and want to see more content like this, make sure you leave this video a big old thumbs up and smash that subscribe button. Well, here we go, guys. The third spin of the wheel. We all know that we've had two good ones straight away. Goals matter. What's this? You must score 75 goals this year or all your attackers get a minus three in rating. Left wingers, right wingers, centre forwards and strikers. I'm assuming those are the positions I'd have to decrease if we don't get 75 goals. Now, I've just checked, guys. So far, this UV team has scored more than 75 goals every season, so hopefully we can do that once again this year. But unfortunately, our budget has taken a bit of a hit. 107 mil is all we've got to spend this season but luckily there's only one position I kind of want to focus on and that is our right midfielder Philip Kostic. I mean he's 32 years old now. Granted he's 86 overall but how long he's going to last like that with him getting on a bit now is a different story. And I feel like replacing him with Real Social as Takfusa Kubo is absolutely the right move. I mean he's still very young. He's almost as good as Kostic right now and I feel like if we include Kostic in this deal it'll be way cheaper. And I was bang on the money because with Kostic a part of this deal we only had to fork out 30 million euros. Now we do still have 84 mil to spend after that transfer has gone through and I'm going to be dead honest I don't think we need to spend this. I mean look at how stacked this team is ladies and gents. The best part is they're all relatively young as well so we don't have to worry about an age problem. The only thing we have to really worry about is if we don't score more than 75 goals in the Serie A this season because if we don't our attackers are going to take a hit when it comes to their rating. Well, the good news is we did score more than 75 goals, so our attackers' ratings are getting left alone, but we finished fourth in the Serie A, 10 points behind Inter. That just isn't good enough. We have, however, once again won the Super Cup, battering AC Milan to do it. But Torino have knocked us out to the Coppa Italia in the round of 16. Oh my god, that is definitely not going to go down well with Juve fans. And to top it off, the bottle jobs have knocked us out to the UCL in the round of 
16. Honestly, I feel like we're at a low point now with Juve. I mean, for God's sake, how the hell is this team not winning the Serie A title comfortably and not getting even to the semi-finals of the UCL? It just doesn't make sense. But looking at the stats, guys, you'd think we've done way better. Vlaovic's got 36 goal contributions. Kubo got 30 in his debut season for us. Havertz got 30 goal contributions as well. I mean, how is Havertz our most consistent player, man? Looking at the leaderboard, it isn't looking good right now. We have got seven seasons left, so we have got a lot of time to turn this around. But right now, Juve definitely need to pull their socks up going forward. We also need to get a little bit lucky with this wheel. There's more bad on this wheel than good. Oh, no, what is this? Bad position change. Convert your best striker to a goalkeeper and make sure he plays every game this season. Oh my god. God, we're going to lose Vlavic as our top striker and shoving him in goal. That is not going to be good. Look at his overall now, for God's sake. He's 21 rated. He's lost 71 ratings in one go. That wheel can go to Hal. And just to make sure he plays every single game, I have sent Simone Scaglia and also Chesney both out on loan for a season, which means for this year, we've got a 21 rated keeper in between the sticks. We are absolutely shafted. The only thing we can really do is bolster this back three. I mean, Mocky Kinyos is our highest rated centre back, but he's 32. And Kanate is our lowest rated centre back, but he's 27. So who the hell do I replace? I don't think it really matters, guys. All we need is a world-class centre-back, and Ruben Diaz is definitely the man for the job. I mean, we'll get at least three or four good years out of him. We'll have no centre-backs in the team under 90 overall, and honestly, I can't think of any other solution to help us prevent getting absolutely battered left, right, and centre because we've got a 27-rated keeper. And because his contract was running out, he only cost us 100 million euros. I'm not sure if this is going to work, but there's only one way to find out. Let's go to the end of this season to see how badly we've done. Guys, we've just reached the end of season four, and now that we're here, I have just realized I have made a massive mess up in that transfer window. I spent so much time worrying about our defense because we got Vlavic in goal that I didn't realize Vlavic used to be our best striker, so Milik's been our second striker alongside Moise Keane up top. And we still had a good amount of money to bring in someone half decent to go up top with Moise Keane. I am honestly such an idiot. And we very nearly paid the price for it. 17th in the Serie A is where we we finished 24 games out of 38 we lost as well oh my god yeah we need a new striker next year and we definitely need a new keeper but we somehow made it to the semis of the Coppa Italia. granted Inter Milan smashed a 7-2 but the fact we made it to the semis with Vlavic in goal is actually mental and we actually did decent in the UCL third in group D we do go to the Europa League so there is still a small chance that we will win that then again maybe not because FC Michelin beat us 3-1 on aggregate in the pre preliminary round. And to top it off, Spurs won the Europa League. Honestly, at this point, I'm ready to give up with Juve. But credit where credit's due, these stats are pretty decent. I mean, Kubo, Chiesa, Havertz, Moise Keane. I mean, Moise Keane definitely didn't perform all that well. It was more Kubo and Chiesa, but those pair definitely did put a shift in. Honestly, the fact that that option on the wheel wasn't even the worst one terrifies me because that has well and truly shafted us this year. I'm just praying to God that next season we actually get a good one. But guys, I've just clicked in on something. We are now into season five. Rest S is playing for Sevilla. Now, I don't know how this has happened. His contract was at the maximum that I was allowed to give him. I only loaned him out. He definitely didn't have a release clause. So how this has happened, I will never know. It's only dawned on me as well because I had to send Skaglia and Chesney both out on loan to make sure that Vlavic got the game time last year. I mean, what is going on with this game, man? That is absolutely awful. But there is a little bit of good news. Going into season five, the age situation we've got right now isn't really a situation. There's only a couple of players above 32 years old. So hopefully, if we land on a good thing on this wheel, we can not only rectify this, but definitely improve the team where we need to. But after the last two years, I'm not holding my breath. But we have landed on a good one, Jay. What is J? Only sign plays whose first or last name begins with J. Ah, oh, because he's Juventus. Oh, that's so clever, Wheel. So clever. We do also have 147 million to spend on these signings. And hopefully the letter J comes in clutch for us because we bloody need it to. And so far, guys, so good. Jan or Black is 34 granted, but he's 88 overall. Not worth all that much. I know that I've used him in a previous takeover, but desperate times call for desperate measures. And following him is a player I've never 
that actually used on career mode before Zhao Felix is 27 87 rated definitely gonna cost us quite a bit but I absolutely believe he'll be worth every penny and that is yet another transfer window in the history books as we spent 118.2 million pounds on both of these players and now the team looks like this going into the halfway point of this takeover and we've got to bounce back in a big way this year ladies and gents we've got no European football which I definitely want to change and honestly I need us to win that title this year we've gone way too long in this takeover now without winning silverware and it looks like it's going to be a little bit longer we were nowhere near the Serie A title this year 21 points to be exact separated ourselves from the league winners AC Milan but we have finally won the Coppa Italia beating Verona in the final I've got to admit though guys even though we have won silverware this year the fact we've only won four trophies in five years with a team this good is incredibly worrying to me but the stats as you can see are pretty decent especially Chiesa 40 goal contributions in 45 games that's outstanding but as it stands on the leaderboard if my maths are right it's mathematically impossible to catch up with Arsenal our only hope now is if we match or surpass Tottenham Hotspur and Manchester United so we are going to start the second half of this takeover by going to the wheel broke oh please tell me this isn't what I think it is for the next five seasons Harvey Budgie oh my god I actually hate this wheel with a passion man we did have 173 million now we've got 86 million to spend it's going to be like that until the very end of this takeover now but I'm honestly so puzzled on where we put this money ladies and gents maybe we do invest in the keeper again maybe we bring resters back to the goddamn team considering I never got rid of him in the first place you know what guys I think that's exactly what I'm going to do he's worth between 98 and 78 and a half million so if we include a lot of money alongside either Yano Black and Chesney I reckon we can pull this off so I'm offering 68 million alongside Chesney let's see if they actually go for this they've actually gone for it oh my god I'm actually kind of gobsmacked they've actually gone for it and there he is back in the UV kit I feel like I'm going to send Yano Black out on loan this year just to make sure that Restes actually gets the game time I want him to get now as for the team I've updated every single player's instructions I definitely feel like this does make a difference in game and I'm hoping it does have a difference this year because quite frankly we need it to and now with Restes added to the team I'm very confident that this starting 11 can not only win the Serie A title we can win the Coppa Italia and maybe cause an upset in the UCL and this time I was bang on the money we are the best team in Italy once again with you they 26 points clear of second place isn't it and we've won the double as we've smashed Verona 5-0 to win the Super Cup but Inter Milan got their revenge on us in the Coppa Italia knocking us out of that in the quarters but we finally won our first Champions League with Juve since 1996 beating Man City to do it thank God for that we finally got the treble and looking at the stats I'm not bloody surprised look at Kai Havertz for God's sake 68 goal contributions in 54 games what a goddamn play he's turning out to be for us oh my god if we can keep this going with Juve honestly we may end up actually surpassing Manchester United and Tottenham Hotspur after all and with the wheel being pretty balanced now going into season 7 we may land on a good one this is a big one what is this cheat code sign 3 players of your choice with unlimited budget that is absolutely incredible and true to the wheels word guys we've got 1 billion now in our budget to spend on 3 players so we've got to choose very wisely now we've got 4 seasons left of this takeover and as you can see honestly when it comes to the age situation we don't really have one to be honest because I reckon majority of the players in our starting 11 will last us until the very end of this takeover now well almost everybody at least Bremer and Ruben Diaz will definitely go down before then they're both 32 years old and by the time the end of this takeover arrives they'll be 36 years old so maybe two centre backs are definitely on the cards I've got to be honest though I've been having serious difficulty on where to put that third transfer the other think I can think of is a second choice keeper but with us having literally no restrictions on who we can bring in it seems like a bit of a waste but strategically it does make the most sense because Jano Black's 36 now he's 87 rated and by the end of the season he definitely won't be 87 rated so it's settled ladies and gents 1 billion is going on two centre backs and a goalkeeper and starting back to front ladies and gents 19 year old Maximilian Meyer 84 rated an exciting prospect he's worth 45 and a half million this one is a bargain Following him is Jarrell Hatto from Wolves. He's 23, 83 rated. We all know what an absolute monster this guy turns into. So this one's a no-brainer. 
And finally, Jason Simon. He's 20, already 87 overall. No wonder AC Milan have been doing so well in this takeover. They got bloody him at the back. And there we go, guys, for a whopping 280 million euros. We signed all three of these players on a five-year contract. Now, let's go to the end of this season to see if we can replicate last year's success. And so far, that's exactly what we're doing. We've once again won the Serie A title. Here's hoping this is literally the turnaround we were after with Juve. Well, maybe I spoke too soon soon as Napoli knock us out of the Super Cup in the semi-final. And Fiorentina knock us out of the Coppa Italia in the round of 16. Guys, I'm not liking where the season's heading. Chelsea also beat us to win the Super Cup. Man, we've got to be doing better than this. And to top it off, Benfica knocked us out in the quarters of the UCL. And when you actually look at that quarter-final draw, we probably had the easiest one. This starting 11 literally has no player under 90 overall and we can't win a treble. Like, what is going on with this team? The only good news this year is Kubo, Moise Keen, Havit, Felix all did pretty well on the score sheet. The rest of the team need to friggin' pull their socks off. I mean, when you look at the leaderboard, United, Spears and Arsenal are taking the mick out of Juve, man. Juventus need to really get their shit together. The problem is as well, the wheel's got three things left on it. Two of them are bad and we've just landed on the worst one. What is bad luck? Make your best player your worst. Zero overall, make no signings either. Oh my God, I feel like I know exactly who our best player is right now too. Guys, I'm actually gutty. Kai Havertz is our highest rated player, 96 overall i don't have to sing this guy's praises believe me but he's been by a mile our best and most consistent player since the start of this takeover and there we go guys it is done he's now six overall he's not quite zero rating but honestly he's not exactly gonna get in the starting 11 is he to be fair though we've got away with it because we changed the formation back to the 3142 and every single player in the team actually fits it now even with the absence of kai Havertz. So even though we've lost our best player and aren't allowed to make any signings, we may actually have a half-decent season eight. And we've already matched last year's trophy count. We've won the Serie A once again, this time by 23 points. We, however, once again didn't win the Super Cup. Honestly, losing to Lazio, that is just not good enough. But we have won the Coppa Italia, beating Inter Milan to... Hang on, how do we beat Inter Milan to win a trophy, but we can't beat Lazio to win one? We also made it to the round of 16 in the UCL before... AS Monaco absolutely annihilated us. How do they beat us 5-3? What the hell have they got on their team? Bloody Mbappe again. I'll be honest, I don't know what the hell else we've got to do to win more than two trophies a season. We've only got one player in the starting 11 who's not 90 rated. However, this year the stats look so much better. 43-5 and five for Moise Keane, 24-16 and 16 for Kubo, and 22-12 and 12 for Jao Felix. Fair play. But unfortunately, those stats which should be winning us the treble or quadruple are only winning us doubles right now we've only got two more seasons in charge of this Juve team to actually win more trophies we've got to make the most of this so we are hoping we can land on the good one in season nine and we are underdog story what's this make a player in your reserves your joint highest rated player oh my god that is actually a game changer as you can see, Kubo is our highest rated player, which means that Thiago Jello's overall is being increased to 96 rated. Look at him, 12 overall growth. That's ridiculous. And we've got 95 million in our budget to spend on improving this team because that wheel didn't say anything about not making any signings. And I honestly think we just bring in a second choice striker over Caio Jorge. I mean, I really did try to grow this guy. I sent him out on loan so many times, but he just didn't improve. So we are going to be replacing him. And his replacement's going to be Goncalo Ramos, 30 years old at 86 overall. It never hurts to weaken our opponents and honestly he's going to be a way better second choice striker than Caio Jorge. And after a lot of strenuous negotiations, £80 million was the number that we agreed upon to bring Goncalo Ramos over to Juve. But as good as this team is right now, it doesn't make a damn bit of difference unless they actually start winning more trophies. For it is once again a good start as we have once again won the Serie A title. But but we got knocked out once again in the Super Cup semi-finals. And Fiorentina once again knocked us out to the Coppa Italia, this time in the quarter-finals. 
But we've won the UCL, guys, beating Frankfurt 4-1 in the final. So at the very least, we have won the title and the UCL this year. In stats-wise, it's the same people every year. Kubo, Moiskeen, Felix, Chiesa, all of them putting a right shift in. But I still don't get how this team doesn't win more than two trophies a season. A team this good should be at least getting the quadruple every year, man. And as you can see from the leaderboard, we're nowhere near Arsenal, Spurs or Manchester United. So going into season 10, let's just try to win as many trophies as humanly possible and end this takeover on a high note. So let's first and foremost get the wheel out of the way. There's only one thing left and it's a bad one. What the hell is it going to be? Tough transfer window. Swap your three highest rated players for the three Serie A's worst players in and sign no other players. Uh, what a bloody thing to end on. And just look at who our three best players are. Moise Keane, who we've had since season one, Takfusa Kubo, and also Thiago Jalu, who just recently became 96 rated. Now 97 rated, now we've got to get rid of him. And just look at who we're going to be replacing with. Samuel D'Angelo from Udinese, who's 19 years old, 59 rated. Matteo Campani from Pisa, 31 years old and 57 rated. And the worst one, Aaron Blanchard from Palmer, 23 years old, 51 overall. How are you that bad in the top flight of Italian football, for God's sake? And as much as it broke my heart, I had no choice but to go through with it. Our three highest rated players have been swapped for the Serie A's three lowest rated players, and that's our transfer window done for season 10. But looking at this team, ladies and gents, it's actually crazy how good it is, even though we've just had to basically get rid of three of our highest rated players for absolutely nothing in return. Now, this is the final season of the takeover. I'm not hoping for much, but I am at least hoping that we can end on a high note. Maybe a treble, maybe a quadruple. I just don't want to get a double, man. I've had enough of them for one video. But it is a good start. Another Serie A title. 14 points clear top of the table this time. And we've won the Super Cup, so that's trophy number two. But Atalanta knock us out of the quarter, so we're not winning the Coppa Italia. But we have won the Super Cup, so that's the treble already. As for the UCL, guys, we do top group A pretty comfortably undefeated. We also smash Atletico in the round of 16. And we've smashed Leverkusen in the quarters. And we've smashed Newcastle in the semis. We're playing Bayern in the final. We've got the chance to win our fourth trophy. All we've got to do is beat Bayern for a second time this year. Come on, man. Please end on a high note. And we've done it. 4-2 in the end. We have won our third UCL with Juve, if I'm not mistaken. Beating Bayern Munich to do it. And that is our first quadruple secured with Juve. You know what the mad thing is? Not only has it taken us literally 10 seasons to get four trophies in one season. We did it the same season. We swapped our three highest rated players up for the three worst in the Serie A. How does that makes sense. But guys, Matthias Sula stepped up to the plate this year. 56 goal contributions in 56 games. Fair play to him. Maybe we didn't use this guy enough. I know that some of you will definitely rinse me in the comments for not using him. But the overall stats at the end of this takeover, Kubo was indeed our top goal scorer. Havits was our top assistant. And we end this takeover with 16 trophies in our cabinet. And as you can see from the leaderboard, Juve are rock bottom. But there is room for one more team to try and take Arsenal's top spot away from them but we're gonna to have to wait till next week to find out who that is but we are gonna leave the video there ladies and gents if you've enjoyed this takeover leave it a big old thumbs up smash that subscribe button if you want to see more content from me just click right here